individual, please come forward. Crime Stoppers is offering $5,000 reward for any information leading to the identity, arrest, and indictment of the pers person responsible for this crime. The terminal tower would be right here. You will see the individual firing into the group. Two people were hit. You'll see another view from overhead where you will see the gunfire. The individuals then ran and you'll see they proceeded into Tower City after the shooting. I want you to notice the people fleeing, hiding behind the planters, old people startled and frightened. You will see the suspected shooter approaching now. You can see it looks both like both of these individuals are carrying guns. Commander. Sure. Thank you, Prosecutor. Appreciate it. Good morning. Good morning. Just some context for this investigation. I can't get into a lot of details. Obviously, it's an active, ongoing investigation. However, following the shooting, we did detain and arrest two juveniles. Both of those juveniles did have firearms and they're facing weapons charges. One of those weapons was stolen, um, just for context. Um, at the end of the day, uh, this, is, this should not define Cleveland. We, we, we have to be better than this. We are better than this. This isn't just unacceptable downtown. This is unacceptable in any of our neighborhoods. We, we absolutely have to do better. Um, up to this point in the investigation, we need the public's help, and I'm confident that we're going to get it. I'm confident that someone's going to come forward, they're going to do the right thing, so that this person can be held accountable. You watch this video and you see all these juveniles running around. Chaotic, gunfire, senseless violence. But I will say this, not all juveniles are, fit this category. We, we work with juveniles all the time, rec centers, we do different programs, we interact with juveniles all the time. I don't want to paint all juveniles in the city of Cleveland with a broad brush. There are a lot of good kids out there, but there are those that are wreaking havoc in the streets and they need to be held accountable. So we need your help. That's all I have for you. Thanks. Patty? Patty Meehan from Crime Stoppers. Thank you. As Prosecutor O'Malley did mention, Crime Stoppers is offering a reward of up to $5,000 for identifying um, this person of interest. I do have posters for everyone. We are going to be putting this on our Facebook page to get this individual identified. Um, we need the public's help in identifying this person and to get this, this crime solved. Um, public Square is a place where families should be able to come and enjoy. It's a beautiful place and Cleveland is a beautiful city. So we're looking for the public's help to help the Cleveland Police solve this case. Thank you. I'll have copies of this for all of you. Um, I just wanted to mention, I'm Deputy Chief Sammy Morris, Cleveland Vigilant Police, that there was a full police detail um, that evening. That's the reason that the uh, two suspects were apprehended so fast. This occurred while the police were there and clearing the scene. And again, we apprehended two of uh, the juvenile suspects that night because um, the fast action of the uh, police detail that we had for the ceremony. Thanks. Again, I just want to reiterate, as Commander Tucker has indicated, that this is not all juveniles, but there are certain juveniles um, who are using guns, and they use guns far too often. And we saw in that video, it appears that some, several of the kids were carrying weapons within their, within their clothing. So um, thankfully, nobody was not more seriously injured or killed during this event. Um, but I am very optimistic that the public is also fed up with this situation and that we will get uh, some tips to uh, solve this crime. Any questions? What are the status of the, the two juveniles that were shot? 
their case, the two juveniles are sad, they're still recovering. Right. Um, realistically speaking, the sheriff's downtown, how safe is downtown right now? Like, well, you know, I would say this. I think downtown is safe, but wherever, whatever, doesn't matter where you're at, whether it's downtown, second district, third district, first district, Solon, Chagrin Falls, Westlake or Rocky River, people have to remain vigilant wherever they are. And so whatever community you're at, we have crimes occurring all over the county. And you just have to be aware of your surroundings. Um, always exercise caution. Um, but you just got to be aware. So it, again, we, and I know Cleveland Police are, are working hard in all the districts. We have a great success rate in solving crimes, but we also are doing our best to try to prevent crimes as well. And uh, I mean, it's all over. It's not just in Cleveland. With these, these are juveniles you suspect? Uh, the yes. You had, and and uh, is there any way to hold their parents accountable for what their kids do? There is not, unless we have an action where perhaps a parent is providing a, a, a child a gun like we saw in that like crazy Ethan Crumley case up in Detroit where uh, that level of stupidity was reached. But really, um, you know, car parents have to remain vigilant. They have to try to supervise, educate, keep their kids going in the right path. But you know, as we all know, parents can only do so much. Tragically, I see too many cases where, where parents are the victims, uh, um, you know, from their own children. So um, in a situation like this, unless there's some connection with the parents in the crime, we, we can't charge the parents for this. Prosecutor O'Malley, what's it like for you watching that video? Yeah, you know what? I think all of us suffer. You know, the worst thing that happens, I yearn for the day where we can come in and not have this. I really do, because it's tragic to see. I know the impact that that will have on all of those people that were there that day, scrambling, hiding behind planters, dropping to the ground, I mean, it leaves an impression in one's mind that takes time and, you know, in, in a lot of soul searching to overcome. And we have to maintain quality neighborhoods, a quality downtown throughout our county. And, uh, you know, we see it too often. I mean, it, it, we saw what happened earlier this week with the, whether it's the coach from Ohio State and the, the two women who were almost victims of the, that same group and, um, you know, it's this, and I want people to understand that it's a very small percentage of people who are creating all of this havoc. And we saw it earlier this week where the, those individuals did four carjackings or attempted carjackings within less than 24 hours. And so it's a very small group of people doing this. And so CPD does a great job in solving the crimes. That's why so many are. are our solve rate is so high. We work together as partners throughout the county. And, um, but it is tragic to see. I, the last thing any of us want to see is anybody doing stuff like this and impacting their lives for years to come. What can you say about the snitch culture? A lot of people say, at least somebody knows who this guy is, where he is right now, but they won't tell. What can you say to people about snitch? You know, I have this theory. Snitching is, let's say me and my, my buddy, do something wrong. I tell on him. I'm snitching on him. If you see us do it, you're a good citizen. How do we change that attitude from snitches get stitches to being responsible citizens? You know, that's a great question. You know, the reality is it's not just the kids amongst themselves. Parents know what's going on. Parents know who these kids are in the video. When this video is released in 10 minutes, there are going to be parents who say, I know that kid, and I know that kid, and I know that kid. So it's beyond just the group. We as a community have to get together and do what's right for the community as a whole. Because while they may have hit those, that 13-year-old and 15-year-old at public square today, it could be their children that are hit tomorrow. And we as a community have to come together to work to try to stop this hold those accountable, and get the rest of the kids on the right path forward so that th this culture of guns and violence, it, you know, is eradicated. That we teach kids right and, 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 and family, it starts at the home and families work with their kids. But again, it's not just the kids who can 
solve this issue. It's the parents who also know what's going on. And the prosecutor, can you tell us, the two that were arrested, where, what are they charged with and where's their case still pending? Yeah, they're both still pending. They were both charged with carrying concealed weapons. Uh, one of the guns was stolen, as the commander had indicated. But, you know, the tragic is I look at this video, and you'll go to your computers back at your stations and look at it. It, it clearly appears that many of the kids are armed. And the fact that CPD grabbed two people, and they were both armed, two juveniles, and they were both armed, when you look at that video, isn't surprising because it looks like a lot of them are armed. And that's tragic. And, again, there's families down there families with young children, it's a festive season. You know, people just want to be safe, whether you're downtown or you're walking St. Clair or you're walking Rocky River Drive, people just want to be safe. You know, and a lot of families said that there was chaos that was going on for a while prior to the shooting. I know you had officers down there. Were there any arrests made like before then or what were the officers? So we, we had over 25 police officers on this detail in, in the near vicinity of where this happened and there were fights. There were fights breaking out all over the place. So. Our officers did a great job. They were, they were trying to keep the peace, break up the fights, and disperse the crowd actually when this happened. So yes, there, there were fights throughout Public Square, and do you think unfortunately. That, right, unfortunately. Do you think that, and you had 25, that seems like a lot of officers. So is there anything that you've learned from this that you might do different next time that there, this big event? So we've debriefed um, my, my detective unit, um, the special events coordinator. Uh, we've learned some things from this. Um, and we're continuing to learn, and there are some things that we're going to do different to try to help mitigate this in the future, no doubt. The two 17-year-olds, just to clarify, I know at the time um, when the information initially came out, um, one of them was cleared from any involvement. I just want to confirm, is that also the case for the second clear of any involvement with this particular shooting? The first two individuals that were arrested on that particular night, yeah, they, my understanding is they have, we have not connected them in any way to the shooting. You know what? There were hundreds of juveniles down there that particular night, so I couldn't say that they were all from one area or one school. I think there was just a lot. However, they all ended up there. They all ended up there, and there was hundreds of them. And so um, I don't know that it's from one particular neighborhood or one particular school. I think there was just a lot of kids down there. And sadly, you know, this was, you know, the worst of it. And th again, thankfully, you know, nobody has lost their life. So that's the blessing. Now, the next blessing is that we improve. We see, as the commander indicated, there will be additional steps taken next year. You know, Public Square has to be a family-friendly place. It has always been in my entire life, and it should continue that way for the next generations of Clevelanders. And, um, you know, as we go through life, we live and we learn, and, and the city has learned. And um, again, I'm hopeful and I'm very confident, I should say, that people step forward today and, and we find out who the individual was who did that, that reckless shooting. What's your message to the families who were there? We have a great city. This was an aberration. Um, law enforcement is collaborating, both the Sheriff's Department, CPD. <coughs> We've got the Ohio State Highway Patrol that's come in, and people are collaborating to continue to keep our community safe and don't let one bad situation you know, erode your confidence in coming downtown to Cleveland. And um, I know how seriously this is being taken amongst all the law enforcement agencies, and I don't think we'll see a repeat of that again next year. Um, I know this wasn't fatal, but do you have any statistics on um, juvenile prosecutions for um, fatal shootings or how many juveniles have been killed in the city this year? Well, I can tell you, I don't know how many were killed. I can find that out quickly. But the reality is I do know that there's been 41 juveniles charged with aggravated murder or murder this year, which is a record high. What kind of charges is this individual uh, punishment set to face? When he's apprehended, felonious assault, weapons charges. And out of curiosity, I know when these photos were blown up on a screen, you mentioned that the young man Well, to, it appears he has a gun. We, we can't prove that, but I think if you look at the video, it appears he's fumbling with something within his, within his pants or clothes. 
um, one person did the shooting. We're, we know that, and that's the person we're focused on. And um, like I said, I'm optimistic after today's press conference that he's going to be apprehended. But it appears there's multiple people. If you look at the video, it appears there's multiple kids carrying weapons. And um, so again, we're focusing on the shooter. All right, I think that concludes the press conference. Thank you. Everybody. Thank you. Thank you. I have flashlights for everybody. Hey, Sammy, how are you? It's so good to see you. I'm good. Hi, Commander. How are you? And I, I didn't want to ask this because I think you're going to be on the end of the